Hello, welcome to the Tea Party Hardy channel for a review of Tom Hanks in Greyhound. Leave the driving to him. Uh, so many people have pointed out the movies that he's made where you should not travel with Tom Hanks. No, he said, yeah, just don't do it. All right, so in this one, he plays the captain of an escort ship during World War II. To the best of my understanding, it's a fictional story. All right, let's get into the review. Uh, I'll give you the review first, as into whether it's good or not. If you like movies that have zero character development, a la Aliens 3, this movie's for you. There is no character development in your first viewing. I watched it twice to see if that made a difference, and I will reveal later how that played out. Okay, so there's no character development. It starts with what they call action except it's hard to not recognize maybe maybe for different people it, it is you can avoid it but it's like it's a green screen and you it's pretty obvious it's a green screen and this ridiculous thing that they've been doing in movies for about 10 years now where when they're using computer to generate the atmosphere in this case an ocean they will put spray on the camera they'll create the illusion that the camera has been sprayed by real water. Which is so stupid because when a movie's actually shot on the real ocean, the director does every single thing they can to keep the water off of the camera lens. Because in real life, if you have water on the camera lens, it's got a really good chance of shooting the spectrum through it. You're going to have rainbow Zima, yeah, so it's just dumb. It's like, guys, first of all, why would you want to make the camera a character? Why are you making the camera a character? We're supposed to be watching the camera, and it, it's not just this movie that's done. I've seen a lot of movies with the CGI. It's just, it's a habit that needs to be gotten rid of completely. Okay. Uh, one of the things I found really confusing about this, and if you know why this is true, or why they got it wrong, please put it in the comments, because I... I don't know this. Uh, my dad was in the Navy in World War II, so I never heard what I'm about to mention. In this movie, he's called Captain because he's the Captain. But the Captain addresses everybody not with a rank, but with the, the, the title Sir. Or, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Lopez this, Mr. Lopez that. Uh, I don't know who that guy is because he's in the movie a lot. I'm thinking he's the dude that does the radar but and sonar. But anyways, yeah, he addresses everybody by Mr. He never calls Sailor... Chief Petty Officer. So, was that normal? Because I've never seen that in a movie that I can recall. And I never heard my dad talk like that. It was always, you know, the uh, sailor, Chief Petty Officer, etc. You know, they use the rank. So, I found out this really weird. I'm like... And that was one of the other reasons I watched it twice. I'm like, is it, is it a military ship that he's running? Or is it a private frigate? And it's no... It's it's a military ship, so I don't I don't get it. I don't know why they did that. All right, so here's what I did. I watched the movie, and I was just like, are they ever going to tell who these people are? And the answer is no. And what was kind of a hoot for me is the dude that plays. I'm guessing he's the engineer. I don't know. He's the dude down and he's down at the bottom, and he's basically Scotty if you're a Star Trek fan. And so he's down there with the charts. But the thing is, for me, it's like he's a British actor, and I know him from a particular Christmas movie that I really love. I won't trouble you with that until Christmas time. Not that we're going to have any Christmas movies this year, thanks to the pandemic, because they're not able to film any of them. That's going to be so rough. But anyway, um, but he he uses an American accent in this movie when he talks, and he doesn't talk very much. He doesn't have very long lines. But it's like, oh, it was just weird hearing him use an American accent. So that was just fun for me. Now, Tom Cru Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks. I like Tom Hanks. He's in a lot of great movies, and he's a brilliant actor. And he wrote the script for this movie. And he is... Um, I didn't like him in this movie as an actor. I found him to be the weakest link in the movie, and the movie's all about him. So, yeah, I was just like... He was, he was phoning it in big time, which I don't understand, because he wrote the movie. I seen him in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood... Or Beautiful Dead Neighborhood, whatever that was. Oh my god, he was he was killing it. He was so good in that. So I know he still got his chops. And I seen him 
play Walt Disney. And like he said in the commentary, I look nothing like Disney whatsoever. So I had to embody his person instead of his look. He did an okay job. He did. I mean, he's no Walt Disney because, yeah, I've watched a lot of Walt Disney stuff about Walt Disney. But he did a good job. He really did. This one, no. No, it was... He was the weakest link. And like, yeah. Now the character development. So I watched it a second time. Because you do get little bits and pieces as the movie goes about the characters. I'm like, is it more interesting the second time when I actually know who these people are and I can actually have some freaking investment? Aliens 3. And it was better that way. And I, all I could think of is like giving them the benefit of the doubt is when they're making the movie. What, you know, when you make a movie, you, you watch when you're doing the editing, you've seen this stuff like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Same thing when you're acting it. You've done the scene time and time and time again. You lose track of the fact that, yeah, the audience still doesn't know who you are. You never told them. You just have them saying little words here and there. And, and as far as the action sequence goes, you're looking at an ocean. There's not even another ship for like 25, 30 minutes. You're just watching an artificial computer-generated ocean. I'm like, it's not really a character, guys. No, it's not. I mean, it could have been if... No, I don't... No. No. Flying Dutchman, you could work it out. Because you got the storm, and the storm becomes a character. But now they didn't even do that. No. And then the... What's up with the the Nazi ships? They're... They... They have these, like, weird paintings on them like they're football teams. And I'm like, where's... Where's... You know. The Indian good luck charm. The swashtika, where is it? This is weird. So, okay, so was it a good movie? Eh, not really. I mean, it's an awesome cable movie, which is what it is, because it's on Apple. But if you paid to see it, oh, wow, no. No, because you don't know anything about the characters until you're watching it the second time, so that you can put the little teeny weeny itty bitty pieces together. And Tom Hanks is not very good in it at all. So, no, I would say on a scale of 1 to 10... It's a definite 6 plus, maybe a 7, because it's not horrible. Oh, speaking of horrible. Sorry, really bad introduction to it. The music in the movie is really weird, and that can go either way. Because uh, I was watching the Disney Gallery, and they had a whole episode dedicated to the music in that, and, and his job was to come up with a very unique sound, just like Sergio Leone for uh, the the spaghetti westerns and John Williams with Star Wars and you know and then I expanded that to say Jerry Goldsmith with Planet of the Apes as well as Jerry Goldsmith with horror genre in the Omen and you know <laughs> you can just keep doing the checks that Jerry Goldsmith invented and th the guy that did the music for this it's so freaking weird and annoying that. Yeah, he did it. I mean, when, if, if that's his style, you can go, oh, yeah, that's him. And if they make a sequel to this, God knows why they would. Um, and they use his music. It's like, no, he did it. He created a tone palette that his, nobody's ever done that before. And so that goes either way. You'll either love it and go, that's so cool. Or you're just like, yeah, you're going to stop making that weird sound. So I don't know. If the movie would have been good, you know, beyond a six. And they did make a sequel then I think I would really like the way the music played out in that way because it is so distinctive as compared to just in one movie. It's just kind of distinctive. <laughs> um, no, but it's like he took a chance and yeah, I'll leave it at that. It's like, I'm not going to say it doesn't work and I'm not going to say it works. It's, 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 I mean, seriously, think about Planet of the Apes. <laughs> that stuff is just obnoxious the first time, but it's Planet of the Apes. And you can say the same thing about this. Yeah, but that's Greyhound. Why did they name it after a bus? Why? Why? It's a bus. No, it's a dog. No, it's a plane. No, it's Superman. Whatever. So anyways, that's the review for that. And with that, we thank you for watching. And we will see you in the future.